the keyframe editor in Apple Motion can seem a little bit daunting and confusing. So today I wanted to show you all of the tools that are found within the keyframe editor so that you can get to animating that much faster. So I just have a basic project set up here. Today we will be animating this rectangle. Now there's a couple ways you can access the keyframe editor. One of which is by coming to the bottom right hand side, you'll see these three keyframes. You'll select that and that is going to bring up the keyframe editor. Now unfortunately I don't have a ton of screen space so we're gonna have to shrink everything down considerably. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and just disable the timeline altogether so that we only see the keyframe editor. So before I actually show you any of the tools here, we're gonna definitely need some keyframes. So all we'll do is jump into the project properties and let's go ahead and animate the scale property. So I'm going to set this to 0%, add a keyframe, then we can move forward a couple seconds and then we can have it move up to 100%. So we now have this basic animation happening here. Now in the keyframe editor, so you can actually right click and you can change the interpolation of any of your keyframes. You also have the ability to change if you want it to ease in, ease out, or ease both. So this is very similar to After Effects' easy ease functions. So I'm going to go ahead and change the interpolation over to Bezier. And you'll notice there is this small handle that pops up, but only this particular keyframe is a Bezier curve. If we wanted both of them, we could select both at the same time, right click, change the interpolation, and you'll notice that there is a line next to linear and a line next to Bezier. That means that there are both of these different types of interpolation happening amongst the keyframes that you've selected. I'm gonna go ahead and change both over to Bezier. Okay, so let's say I wanted to actually change up one of these keyframes. Now you could select it, but the unfortunate problem with this is you'll notice that there is an X a Y and a Z axis all happening within this single keyframe. And because of how this is set up, I have only selected the X track. So if we wanted to select all of them, we would need to click and drag and create a box over all three. And so now if I move this, all three of them are going to be animated. And when I move this, you can actually see the old position of where this keyframe originally was represented by that other line, just so you can get an idea of how much you are changing it. Now I can also push shift and that will allow me to lock it to a specific direction. So if I wanted to go left or right and lock it in, I would start dragging to the left and then hold shift and now I can only go horizontal. Or you can go vertically by going up and then holding shift and now I can only move in a vertical direction. Also, if you want, there is the option, if you go into motion preferences and then go under time, you can see that there is the lock keyframes in time in keyframe editor. If I enable that, when I move this keyframe, I can only move it vertically. So that can be helpful if you are consistently only moving all of your items vertically. I kind of wish there was a simple toggle lock here, but there isn't. So again, that's in preferences, lock keyframes in time keyframe editor. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the tools that are here in the keyframe editor. The first tools that are going to be super important for you to know are actually the tools that help you get around the keyframe editor. So come on over here to the right hand side. You're going to see this icon. What this icon does is it fits the visible curves into the window. So if I select that, it's almost like when you push shift Z and it zooms to fit, it's going to zoom in so that all your keyframes are fit within your window. So this can be really handy. If you want to zoom out, you can actually click and drag on this scroll bar here at the bottom and that will zoom it out. You can also do that with the zoom in and zoom out features here on the left hand side. I can push control K and that's going to create another keyframe for me. And then I can select those. I'm gonna move it way, way up vertically just to make a point here. And then all I need to do is select this option here and that will fit everything into my window. You also have the ability over here on the far right side to auto scale vertically to fit curves. So if you have that enabled, if I were to drag this up, you'll see how the curve line is almost squishing in so that um, I have more space to continue to move that up. So that can be really handy if you are struggling to get around your keyframe editor. And one more way that you can fit all of your keyframes into the window is if you push F, that will zoom everything in so that it all fits within your window. The next option is this snapshot feature. Now this is really handy if you have a ton of animations going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and select these keyframes. I'm gonna push Control K and I'm just gonna actually make a whole bunch of different keyframes here and then I'll move these around. Okay, so I have this animation happening here and let's say that I want to make some changes. Well, we can come over here to the right hand side and select this snapshot button. Now what this is going to do is it's going to create a line of this exact animation. And so now if I move anything in the animation, 
we can still see that original animation for how it was previously. So this can be really handy to actually estimate how much you've changed the animation and give you a good idea of if there's a point that you really want it to land on, you can move the lines as needed. Now let's say that you decided, oh man, I don't wanna actually keep this animation and the changes. We can come over here to the left hand side click on this down arrow and we can go to the bottom of this menu and select set to curve snapshot. And that's just gonna reset everything to how it was. This next option is the snapping feature. Now this is helpful if you have added in any sort of markers. So if I push shift M, I can create a marker. You can see that green dot there. I can move forward and push shift M again. That'll create another marker. So let's say I wanna move the keyframes to these exact markers. I'll make sure that the snapping is enabled. I'll select these keyframes and move it over so now it is fully locked onto that marker there so I can very very easily move these into sync um, let's say you have it going to some music or something along those lines and speaking of music if I've imported any sort of music then there's this option and we can enable that music track so now we can see all of the audio waveforms happening inside of our keyframe editor and if you have multiple audio tracks happening you can actually select those individually. I'm going to go ahead and set this to none so that I don't see any of those music tracks any longer. This last feature here is the clear curve list. Now this is going to tie into some features over here on the left hand side. So let's go ahead and move over there. And right now we have the animated curve set selected. So that means once I have selected this object, any animations that have happened with this particular object will show up down here in our keyframe editor. Let's say I wanna change it over to something like modified. What modified shows us is any of the parameters that have been adjusted at all within the transform panel here will show up in the keyframe editor. So it doesn't have to be animated for it to show up. It will show up regardless. There's also the feature to show all. I recommend you don't use show all because it's just gonna get very, very confusing looking at all these different parameters. So go ahead and leave it just on animated or modified. Now there is one more feature here, the active. Now active is a little bit confusing because you won't see any of the animated features happening on our rectangle. That is until I've made an adjustment. So let's say that I go, okay, I need to start working with rotation. I can click and rotate and you'll notice that on the Z axis, this rectangle has showed up down here in the keyframe editor. There's also the ability to take a look at just the position, rotation, scale, shear, anchor point, opacity, and retiming all within the keyframe editor. Now the last thing is the new curve set. If I select that, I can actually create a custom curve set. So let's say that I just wanna show position and rotation. I'll just write position, and rotation. Now this has actually saved the previous active curve set. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Now, if I wanted to only show the position and the rotation, all I need to do is click and drag the position down here into the keyframe list. So now I will see all the position parameters showing up here, as well as let's say I wanted to work with just the rotation. Again, I can click and drag the rotation down here and that will show up in just my parameters list. Now, if I wanted just individual features, let's say I just want the X value, I can do that as well, bringing that into my new curve set. So anytime I need to, I can just jump back to this specific curve set and all of my keyframes are gonna show up for those specific features. Now, if I decided I just wanted to completely clear out this curve set, but continue to keep this position rotation name, I can come over here to the right hand side and click this option. And that's going to delete out any of the curves that were found in the curve list of this specific set. So then I could start over again, drag my rotation and position. Even if I wanted to do it so for maybe this gradient, I could do that and bring it into this specific curve set. So that's another thing to note is you can have multiple curve sets from multiple objects in your scene. So that is a great way to just save them and have quick access. If you are animating two objects at once, you can do just that. So the next feature I'm gonna show is the sketch keyframes tool. Now, I personally don't know a lot of instances for this. Maybe you just need something really random, but let's say that I wanted to animate very quickly. Um, I could just click and drag and it's going to create keyframes no matter where I put the mouse. So that can be a very quick way to animate something in your scene 
Now, I personally probably won't use that very often, but it is a feature and it ties in perfectly with the next feature I'm going to show, which is the transform keyframes tool. So if I select that very similarly to the regular arrow key, which if I just click and drag, I can move multiple objects at once. But if I select the transform tool, I can click and drag and you'll notice it creates this bounding box. This bounding box can be adjusted in ways that you can't adjust with the regular arrow tool. So I can click and drag and move all of these keyframes around as needed, or I can also stretch them up vertically just like so. I can also squeeze them in horizontally. So you have some extra features that you might not have with the regular arrow tool. Okay, so we have those tools covered. Let's take a look at this panel right here. And to access any extra features on one of these parameters, you can click on this down arrow. Now I can reset the parameters so that just the X axis doesn't have any animations to it. I can also disable a particular animation by clicking on this checkbox here. And finally, if I click on this down arrow, I can also lock a parameter if I don't want to accidentally move any of the keyframes out of place or I can go to reduce keyframes. So if I select that, it's gonna bring up this dialogue window. Now there is the error tolerance. So if I drag this up, you'll notice looking at all these keyframes, how it actually reduces the amount of keyframes that are happening there. So if I wanna smooth out that line, I can come down to the smoothing frames and I'm gonna drag that up and you'll notice how these keyframes actually smooth out a bit and we can increase the amount of lines there again. So you have this option to take out the amount of keyframes that were there originally, making your animation a little bit more minimalistic and easier to read. And you can definitely add more Bezier curves or something along those lines to get a smoother animation. This last feature happens either before the first keyframe or after the last keyframe. So you can tell motion to do something with the object while it's sitting there waiting to be animated. So all we need to do is select our keyframes, we'll come to the left hand side, click on this down arrow, and we can find these two options, before first keyframe and after last keyframe. So let's go ahead and do the after last keyframe, and you'll notice you have constant, linear, ping pong, repeat, and progressive. So if you want something to continuously move along, we can select linear, and you'll notice the animation path keeps on shrinking down. So it's just gonna keep shrinking down until the end of our project. Likewise, we can also select ping pong and you'll notice now the animation path is going back and forth between the two animation types. So it plays forward, then in reverse, then forward, then in reverse. We can also change it to repeat. It's going to shrink down and then start over completely. And finally, progressive, I'm actually not totally sure what that does. Maybe somebody in the comments can enlighten us. Uh, that would be super helpful. And then in turn with those features, you can actually right click on some keyframes and select reverse keyframes. And all that's going to do is completely flip the position that the keyframes were in originally. So if you realize you want something to happen in the opposite direction of what you originally intended, you can easily do that. Again, right clicking and selecting reverse keyframes. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful to you. If it was, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.